Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Whilst learning how to scuba dive, you'll probably notice that there are a lot of TLAs in the scuba diving language and like nomenclature. TLA is a three letter acronym. Uh, I mean, even scuba is an acronym itself. It's a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Uh, a firefighter's breathing equipment is called an SCBA. They just remove the underwater part. We you'll probably hear a lot of acronyms around the dive center, around dive sites and in online forums. So to brush up on as many TLAs as possible, stay tuned. This video is sponsored by the place to buy scuba equipment, scuba.com. They stock a wide range of brands and diving equipment. So you're bound to find your next piece of dive gear on scuba.com or at one of their dive centers. Starting off with BCD, uh, this is one of the very first acronyms that most divers think they know when they learn how to dive, but you'll really, for some reason, really annoy some divers when you say the wrong thing. Um, they take it quite personally that you call it a buoyancy control device. It's not a buoyancy control device, it's a buoyancy compensating device or a buoyancy compensator. Um, some divers just call them BCs, but yeah, it's not a buoyancy control device. Uh, technically, it's, it's a buoyancy compensating device. Your SMB is your surface marker buoy. They're usually bright red inflatable buoys that you tie to a string and then tow them around during the dive from the beginning to the end to mark your location to let boats in the area know that you are down there. Uh, but try not to get them confused with a DSMB, which is a delayed surface marker buoy. A delayed surface marker buoy comes down with you on the dive deflated in a pocket or clipped off to a D-ring or something, and at the end of the dive, when you want to surface, you inflate it, attached to a spool, that shoots up to the surface, and it lets the boats know that there's a diver in the water nearby, and to give them some space. EANX or EAN is enriched air nitrox. When filling up cylinders, we fill it with air and then a bit of pure oxygen, or sometimes we use a membrane to increase the amount of oxygen inside of the cylinder, uh, which can help to extend our bottom time. Low pressure inflator. If somebody refers to their LPI, uh, it's gonna be their inflator on their BCD or sometimes their dry suit uh, or any other equipment that may need inflating. Uh, and it's fed from an LPI hose. Uh, we don't really use LPI H. Hose is a single syllable word, so it's just as easy to say LPI hose. DIN stands for Deutsch Institut für Normung, um, or however that's supposed to be said in German. Uh, it, it means the German Institute for Standardization, because of course Germany has an institute for standardizing everything. Um, but DIN isn't strictly the correct term for this, because this is also a DIN fitting. Um, this on your regulator is actually a G58 thread. Uh, it's just commonplace that we call it DIN. Uh, sometimes it's an M26 if you want to get really technical, but no, DIN is fine, but yeah, strictly it's actually a G58. your submersible pressure gauge. Uh, it was a surprising amount of time before divers could actually see how much gas they had in their cylinder during the dive like we can now. Uh, they just didn't dive with gauges. Uh, eventually a submersible pressure gauge was produced. They had pressure gauges, but you just couldn't take them underwater uh, until they created a submersible pressure gauge. And yeah, we still call them SPGs. You may not see many 
um, of the next few thanks to dive computers um, and updating like training standards. But RDP is your recreational dive planner or your dive tables. I think RDP is quite specific to, uh, to Paddy, uh, is what they named their dive tables. Each training agency uses their own dive tables and there, there is a little variety in some of the ways that it's done and the numbers and whatnot, but they all let you work out how long you can dive at a certain depth and then plan a repetitive dive, including a surface interval. Um, but dive computers have kind of reduced the need for like tangible dive tables, which is a bit of a shame. And if you didn't learn your tables, uh, it's actually worth checking them out and learning how to use them. NDL is your no decompression limit, uh, simply how long you can stay at a given depth and then return to the surface without requiring a decompression stop of some kind. Most training agencies train you to complete a safety stop at the end of every dive where you just hang at five meters for three minutes and a deco stop is much like that, but the depth and the time may vary uh, and they're not quite as optional. your residual nitrogen time. When you complete the dive and you're back on dry land, you're on the surface, you still have some nitrogen inside of your body that you've absorbed at depth. And when you're using dive tables, you need to work out how much nitrogen is still in your tissues and your residual nitrogen time is like a theoretical amount of time that you work out with the tables and add to the next dive time for your next dive when you're planning or logging the dive but your dive computer if you are diving a computer kind of does this all for you MOD is your maximum operating depth. Uh, it's not really concerning your like training level and what your maximum depth for your training level is. Uh, it's more about the gas that you're breathing and what depth that gas becomes dangerous to breathe. When you start diving different gas mixes, you'll start to see stickers and markings on cylinders denoting their maximum operating depth, how deep you can take them. Alternate air source, it's your second second stage. Uh, we all dive with two second stages or at least two second stages. Uh, the one that you're breathing from is your primary and then the other one is gonna be your alternate. Some divers call it an octopus or an octo, uh, but some divers will call it an alternate. Closed circuit rebreather. If the diver is blowing bubbles with every breath, then we call it an open circuit regulator because it's an open circuit. Uh, we have the equipment that can recycle the exhaled gas that we breathe by scrubbing out the carbon dioxide and topping up the oxygen in a closed loop, and that's called a closed circuit rebreather or a CCR. While we're on the subject of rebreathers, you may find a BOV, which is a bail-out valve, normally in the form of a lever or a switch on the mouthpiece to swap between closed circuit and open circuit second stage that's built into the mouthpiece, so that you don't need to remove the mouthpiece to change from your rebreather to a more traditional open circuit second stage. I put these two together because they're quite similar and easier to explain together. DCS or decompression sickness refers to a variety of ailments from nitrogen bubbles forming in your body and causing local damage. If a bubble forms in an artery, it can block blood flow and cause an arterial gas embolism or AGE, a little bonus acronym there. DCI or decompression illness encompasses both DCS and AGE. So they're both very similar terms, but yeah, the DCI is a more all encompassing term.
DIR or doing it right, uh, or sometimes diving it right, is a specific approach to diving to try and maximize safety. Uh, DIR isn't a training agency or anything. It's more of a holistic way of assembling your equipment and actually diving. And it was developed by a, a team of divers to explore cave systems as well as dive very deep and, uh, and very long dives. And they evolved DIR over the years. Diver propulsion vehicle. If you're just cruising along a reef, then your legs are usually decent enough. But if you need to travel greater distances between points, if it's a shipwreck that's in two places, or you're diving one dive site and then there's not very much until the next one, but swimming all that way, you're gonna burn through a lot of energy and gas, then an electric motor attached to a propeller is a nice addition, especially if you're fighting current as well. A DPV is quite handy. A DV is your demand valve and most commonly refers to your second stage. Uh, it's not quite so common anymore, uh, but yeah, if someone refers to their DV, they're probably talking about their second stage. PP or partial pressure. When you get into mixed gas diving, your nitrox and whatnot, you'll learn about partial pressures. And it's basically if you break up the composition of gas that you're breathing into a fraction and then you multiply that by the ambient pressure, it, it just helps us work out when it's safe or dangerous to breathe a gas mix if the partial pressure of something like oxygen is too high. Um, it just puts it into a decimal so it's a bit easier to understand. Rib is sometimes spelt R-H-I-B, uh, it's rarely spelt that way, uh, because it stands for Rigid Hulled Inflatable Boat. Uh, the bottom of the boat, or the keel, uh, is made from a hard solid material, so it's a rigid hull, and then you have the inflatable tenders around the side, that's the inflatable section, so it's a rigid hulled inflatable boat. Surface air consumption rate. Um, simply how much gas that you breathe in pressure units like bar or PSI per minute as if you were on the surface. By keeping track of your sack rate, you can aim to improve your bottom time and kind of plan your diving in general because you know how much gas you breathe over a certain amount of time. So if you know how much gas you have on your back, you can plan your dive and how long your gas will last. Your sack rate is cylinder size specific though. So if you swap cylinders from like a 12 to a 15 or something, then you'll have to recalculate your sack. Similar to SAC, but your RMV is your respiratory minute volume or RMV. It's measured in liters per minute, uh, which can be a bit more useful as opposed to pressure units. If you know how many liters of gas that you breathe in a minute on the surface and you know the amount of gas inside of the cylinder um, that you're wearing, which is very easy, you multiply the volume by the pressure, uh, you can work out how long you can breathe from that cylinder at a given depth. This is a bit easier, more divers work out their RMV instead of their SAC. Your local dive shop or local dive center. Um, it's the dive center usually closest to you that you tend to get your air fills, your spare parts and your dive training and stuff from. Um, they're in a bit of a tough position right now with the industry. Uh, so we do need to look after our local dive stores and yet yeah, really keep them in business. High pressure and intermediate pressure. Sometimes it's HP and LP, which just stands for low pressure. Uh, these are normally referring to your regulator first stage, uh, either the ports on the first stage uh, or the hoses that come out of them. HP, high pressure, is gonna be the, the chamber of the first stage and the hoses that connect to it that deal with the full pressure of your cylinder. The IP, is the lower pressure side of the first stage that feeds your second stages that you breathe from and the low pressure inflator hoses that's set to a lower pressure. Mm -hmm. 
single tank adapter. Uh, this is more for backplate and wing BCDs. Um, for a more stable setup, you can fit like a U-shaped cradle to the back of your backplate and wing. That helps to stop your cylinder from rolling around on your back. Um, th there's not a, a real secure way of bolting them on. So a bit like a recreational BCD, you can find that the cylinder kind of wiggles a little bit if you move around, uh, but with a single tank adapter, uh, it's a physical cradle, so it stops them from twisting and rolling. Feet of sea water or meters of sea water. The salinity of salt water affects the pressure at depth uh, and it can throw your dive computer off by a few percent, but still it's a few. So we need to be specific whether we're diving in salt or fresh water. On most dive computers today, you'll probably find a setting where you can set your computer to salt or fresh water for accuracy. But yeah, MFW will be meters of fresh water, MSW meters of seawater. FFM is your full face mask uh, for either scuba diving or snorkeling. Uh, instead of a classic half mask and a separate mouthpiece, you can combine the two for something that covers your whole face and you can talk, you can breathe through your nose and your face isn't actually exposed to the cold water neither in a full face mask. GF is your gradient factor. Uh, when you start to get more into your diving, you can fiddle with some of the algorithms in your computer to tailor how conservative or aggressive they are about decompression. You'll have a GF high and a GF low, um, which are honestly far too complicated to explain in this short amount of time, but uh, they, they adjust how long your stops are in the water and kind of at what depth they start. Overpressure valve or overpressure relief valve, uh, a little bit like a fuse box uh, that that will blow if the uh, I don't know the, the current gets too high. Um, if the pressure inside of a certain area increases to where it could start to cause damage, an overpressure valve is fitted to vent any excess pressure. You have them on things like BCDs. Most shoulder and kidney dumps are one-way overpressure valves. You have them on DSMBs, um, some first stages on regulators. If they fill up with too much pressure as they're ascending or there's something malfunctioning, then a spring-loaded valve will vent to allow any excess gas to escape. Work of breathing. Uh, you'll probably find this in like a regulator manual or, or a... Um, a uh, description about a regulator online. It's basically how hard you have to suck or blow to open each valve on a second stage. Ideally, you want the lowest work of breathing possible so that your body isn't working very hard at all to move gas in and out of your lungs. But yeah, WOB is your work of breathing. Out of air. Uh, you should have practiced this a few times in your foundational course, and it's fundamentally when one or more divers has run out of air or any gas to breathe uh, for whatever reason is an out of air situation or an OOA. Feet first ascent. Uh, most commonly in new dry suit divers, if the air pocket inside your dry suit goes down to your feet, then that's going to be the floatiest part and you can end up in a runaway ascent feet first. Uh, we do train you how to prevent this in the dry suit course, uh, but yeah, an FFA is a feet first ascent. PDC is your personal dive computer, uh, the computer that you use to monitor your diving and stay safe in the water. Uh, if you're using someone else's, then it's not your PDC. Uh, so yeah, typically it's the one that you own, you strap it to your wrist or your console, wherever it is, that's your PDC, your personal dive computer.
AI in the scuba world stands for air integrated. Uh, it usually refers to your dive computer having a wireless air transmitter that fits to your regulator and then tells your dive computer how much gas you have left in the tank. So you don't have to look at your gauges, it's all on your computer and they can also work out lots of clever things based on your breathing rate and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it just basically means your computer is air integrated. It's not, it's not sentient. RGBM is a reduced gradient bubble model. Uh, it's one of the algorithms that some dive computers use um, to, whilst you're diving to work out kind of you know, how much nitrogen's in your tissues and other things. Uh, there are a handful of algorithms out there, but RGBM is one of them. Now, I'm sure that there are plenty more scuba diving acronyms that the diving community have come up with. Uh, if you do know of any more, then by all means, pop them down in the comments below. Uh, there are plenty of funny ones as well. I, tried, I think the only one I put in was that feet first ascent. Um, but I'm sure you'll get a laugh out of reading some of the comments. Uh, remember to check out scuba.com if you need a new piece of dive gear and check out our website scubadivermag.com if you're interested in a magazine subscription for yourself or somebody you know. And remember that we have the Go Diving Show in the UK coming up. Um, head over to godivingshow.com to buy your tickets. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.